Welcome to this video module on the difference between stock repurchases and dividends. This is a topic that is crucial to your understanding of how companies can give profits to their investors. This video will help you to understand the basics of stock repurchases and dividends and their differences. Companies making profits typically have two uses for those profits. Usually, some part of a company's profits are usually repaid to shareholders in the form of dividends. The remainder, termed stockholders' equity, are kept inside the company and used for investing in the future of the company. Share repurchases are one possible use of leftover retained profits. When a company repurchases its own shares, it reduces the number of shares held by the public. The reduction of the float, or publicly traded shares, means that even if profits remain the same, the earnings per share increase. Dividend is a distribution of value to shareholders. Using this definition of dividend, then stock repurchase is just one form of dividend. When a company buys back its own shares, it has to offer a price higher than the current stock price. Otherwise, investors would have no incentives to sell their stock. By offering a price higher than the markets, the company is distributing value to its existing shareholders. Note that dividend is used in a generic sense of value distribution as well as cash distribution, the most common form of dividend. You should also note that cash dividends are paid on a regular basis unless the company explicitly announces an on-time increase in dividends. The latter is referred to as a special dividend. The main advantage of stock repurchases over dividends is that the latter is a one-time distribution. An increase in dividend is promised to the shareholders such that the company would be paying the dividend on a regular basis in the future. There are two important implications of expected regular dividend and one-time distribution. One is that if a regular dividend is lowered, then investors interpret this act as a bad sign, and thus the price of the stock tends to fall. Because of this built-in expectation, dividend is a burden on the company, as the company feels obligated to satisfy its shareholders' expectation. On the other hand, stock repurchase is a one-time deal, and thus, Shareholders don't expect it to continue in any regular fashion in the future. The reason why stock repurchase versus dividends becomes an issue is because often executives' compensation is tied to the ability to meet the earning per share targets. If the company buys back shares, there are less shares outstanding and therefore it takes less profit to meet the earnings per share target. If you are a shareholder, you would most likely prefer a return of investment in the form of a dividend opposed to a company purchasing shares at a price as often viewed as undervalued. Dividends, on the other hand, are mostly cash in hand that gives the investors options about their further allocation. They could be spent, reinvested in the same or other stocks, or could be placed in a savings account. When a company pays out dividends, it basically loses control of the capital used to pay shareholders those dividends with. Dividend payments are also visible to shareholders, and cutting or eliminating a payment would certainly create negative publicity for the company. But is an increase in dividend good or bad for the shareholders? The answer is, it depends. Using the previously stated definition of dividend, paying it suggests that the company must, at least, have excess cash on hand. Thus the question boils down to, what should a company do with its excess cash? Such a company has two alternatives. Either invest the money in projects, internal expansion or acquisitions, or distribute it to shareholders. The choice between those two alternatives is simple. If the company has good projects, those with net present value which are greater than zero, then it should invest in these projects as they would create value to shareholders. Otherwise, the company should distribute the excess cash to its shareholders in the form of dividends. Thus, when a company increases its regular cash dividend, it is typically saying one of two things. 1. Using the burden argument outlined above, the company must be saying or signaling that it expects to be profitable in the future, and thus the increase in dividend is not a burden. The second scenario, using the good project argument above, is that the investors may interpret the move as a signal that the company does not have a profitable project and thus is distributing excess cash. Obviously, if the market believes the first argument, then stock prices tend to increase, and prices decline if they believe that the company is facing the second scenario. What is the final answer? Which is better, cash dividends or share repurchases? 
Like so many questions, the answer is simply, it depends. If you are an investor that needs cash upon which to live, or want to ensure that you, rather than the management, has the ability to allocate excess profit, you might prefer dividends. If, on the other hand, you are interested in finding a company that you truly believe has the ability to generate large profits by reinvesting in a business that can earn high returns on equity with little on debt, you may want a firm that repurchases shares. Be careful, though, and realize that at the end of the day, a company can be extraordinarily successful if the other things are in place, regardless of the total share count. Starbucks, for example, has experienced significant increases in shares outstanding during the time it has been a publicly traded company. Yet these shares have motivated employees to help build the business and resulted in tremendous profitability and growth for the company's initial investors. Walmart, on the other hand, has maintained split-adjusted, a fairly steady share count, and in recent years, has actually decreased the number of shares outstanding while experiencing high growth and paying cash dividends. It stands alone as one of the perfect combinations in Wall Street history. Thank you once again for your time and attention, and this is businesstraining.com, where you can earn a master's level qualification to make more money.